Okay. After you learn so many ways to test the convergence of the series, probably you are now feel like very exhausted because you have so many ways to test the series, right? So this is a guideline for choosing the test. It is a general guideline, but you know, like at the end of the day, you have to use your own skill or your experience to pick what test do you want to use. But this is the guideline, the, the big picture that you can always do. So the first of all is, if you see the series summation of A subscript K here, that I highlight in yellow, if you see the summation AK here, what you can do the first one is, you can start by looking at the divergent test. So the divergent test say that if you take the limit of A sub K and it is not equal to zero, so then the series is going to be divergent. This is an easy one because if you can see that the limit is not equal to zero, then the series is divergent. This should be the first one that you take a look at. And if it is, if it is the case that limit is not equal to zero, then you conclude that the series is divergent. And then after that, uh, you can take a look at the spatial series that, uh, is there a pattern or something that you can tell it is a spatial series? So the special, the special series that you learned in this class, we're going to have geometric series, we have P-series, and we also have telescoping series. So you can uh, try to match with the form of geometric P-series and telescoping series. And then after that, what we learn is if you see something that you can integrate it, maybe you're going to use the integral test, but this one is the one that uh, a little bit tough because you have to go to the integral and then do the improper integral. Number four and number five, this is the one that you learned last week. So it, it is ratio test and root test. So ratio test and root test gonna be useful when you see some pattern that is, um, actually if you see K factorial, that is going to be the ratio test for sure because you cannot uh, use something else to do the, uh, to deal with the K factorial here. Or if you see something power k here, it should be ratio test or root test. And the last one is you can always use the comparison and limit comparison test. But this one, you have to be uh, a little bit creative on what you pick the bk one to compare it. So this guideline in general will help. But uh, you know when you see the problem, it's going to be your experience to do it. So let's try to do the example together. For example, so we're going to uh, walk you through how to check the convergence of the series in general. Okay, first of all, uh, let me start by today by looking at example 5. So use the test of your choice to determine whether the following series converge. So basically, they ask you the series convergent or divergent uh, part A. Let's start by, by summation k to the 100 over k plus 1 factorial k start from 1 to infinity. This one you should you should be able to do it immediately by I told you that if you see factorial here you have to use the ratio test. Okay. So the keyword here is the keyword when you see the factorial one you're going to use the ratio test. Not always, but usually factorial going to go well with the ratio test because you can cancel something. What is the statement of the ratio test? So you can think, oh, the statement of the ratio test is you're going to do limit ak plus 1 over ak, remember? And when k go to infinity, if this one, you compute it. If this one, you get something less than 1. That means you get the convergence series. If you get something bigger than 1, that means the series divergent. If you get something equal to 1, no conclusion. So this is the statement of the ratio test. So basically, you compute A subscript K plus 1 over A subscript K and then trying to compare that limit with number 1 and make a conclusion. So we're going to start by let a k to be k to the 100 over k plus 1 factorial. 
of course when you see it on the midterm exam for this question you may have uh, another way to do it you probably think oh can i do the divergent test can i do the uh, limit comparison test can i do comparison test sometimes you can but as i told you when you see factorial ratio test is the easiest one the factorial one gonna lead you to the ratio test trying to memorize this trick because this is always work and uh, a subscript k here so you're gonna have limit a k plus one over a k here and then now you plug in it's gonna be limit uh, k plus one to the 100 over k plus two factorial this is a k plus one and then over a k this is going to be k plus one factorial over k to the hundred so basically i start from plugging in k plus one and then i do one over a k and flip flip it back so it's gonna get back to the thing that we have over there so k plus one factorial over 100 uh, over k to the 100 now you make a cancellation so k plus 1 factorial if you group up with k plus 2 factorial it's gonna cancel out so you're gonna have only k plus 2 in the bottom right because k plus 2 factorial is k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial so it's just gonna cancel out or you go you only have k plus 2 uh, on the bottom but the next term is k plus 1 to the 100 and also you have k to the 100 so this one you can if you want to you can group it up so it's going to be something like uh, k plus 1 over k to the 100 so you can see that both of them are you know power 100 so you can group them up and then now you in the middle term so k plus 1 over k the limit gonna go to 1 and that is 1 to the 100 this is the limit gonna go to 1 right so you can imagine that it's it's actually 1 plus 1 over k and that is limit the limit of 1 is 1 limit 1 over k is 0 so it's actually go to 1 so basically at the end uh, once you compute the limit this thing go to one and the top the the term that you have in the front is one over k plus two it's gonna go to zero right because this is one over k plus two it's go to zero so the first term go to zero the second term go to one so actually it is equal to zero which is less than one so the series is convergent So the series here is convergent. This is by the ratio test. Okay. Makes sense. So the ratio test is going to be on your midterm exam, but uh, you know, not on your exam on this coming Wednesday. It's going to be on the midterm exam, but the key idea is factorial. You use the ratio test. So it's going to be for sure one question that I put factorial on the midterm exam and then you have to use the ratio test. All right, so let's move to part B here. So what if you see summation k squared plus k plus 1 over 4k squared plus 1k start from 1 to infinity here? What would you do if you see the series like part B here? So first of all, you can see that uh, there are so many ways to do this question. Um, if you go back to the guideline, the guideline say that the first test that you should trying to use it is the divergent test because you can define this thing as your AK, right? If you define this thing to be your AK, you can take limit of a k and see if it is equal to something that is not equal to zero or not what is the limit of a k here one over four right it's gonna be limit k square plus k plus one over four k square plus one 
can anyone see it pretty quick? This is 1 over 4. Because this is the... You can see that the degree on the top is 2, the highest degree. The highest degree on the bottom is 2 as well. So they already balanced. So actually it's 1 over 4. Because you can see that if you divided everything by k square, so it's going to be... Okay, if you feel like this is way too fast for you, so you can say 1 plus 1 over k plus 1 over k square over 4 plus 1 over k square. You can divide everything by k square and it's going to be 1 over 4. This is not equal to 0. So basically, the series is divergent by the divergent test. We know immediately that it's going to be divergent because the limit is not equal to zero. But you know, if you feel like you want to use something else, you can because sometimes you, for, sometime you forget the divergent test. And if you feel like, Ajahn, can I use something else? You can also use comparison test for this one. You can also use the limit comparison test. You actually can use more something. If you use the ratio test, mm, no, ratio test will not work. I think ratio test, you're going to get uh, something equal to 1 and no conclusion. But basically, the limit is not equal to 0. It's the easy case. So try it first. And then if it is not equal to 0, you're going to conclude it by the divergent test. Similar to what you're going to see on this Wednesday on the exam. Uh, when you see the series, if I didn't tell you uh, that you have to use this one, so you maybe try the divergent test first and you see if the limit equal to zero. If the limit is not equal to zero, you can make a conclusion immediately that the series is divergent. Okay. All right. So two more questions. Pass C. 2 to the k over e to the k minus 1. So everyone take a look at this one. So how do we make the decision this is convergent or divergent? Of course, we're going to follow the guideline. So first of all, can we use the divergent test? Can we? So if this one is a subscript k, so you can make a, make a compute a limit. Limit of 2 to the k over e to the k minus 1. You're going to get limit of, how do you compute the limit here? You can uh, move 2 to the k to the bottom, right? Divided everything by 2 to the k. Actually, divided everything by e to the k because e is bigger than 2. e is 2.71, right? So e is bigger than 2. So we're going to just change the top part to 2 to the k over e to the k. And then this is e to the k over e to the k minus 1 over e to the k. And the limit on the top part is going to be 2 over e to the k. This is 1 minus 1 over e to the k. The top part 2 over e is less than 1. So by geometric sequence, this should be 0. Because it's going to go to 0, 1 minus 0, it's going to go to 0 as well. So the divergent test does not work. Right? Because once you're trying to compute the limit of A subscript K, it's going to be 0. This is our AK. What else you can do? If you feel like the divergent test is not OK, so number two, you can think of, is this P series? No way. So the P series is one over K to the something. So this is not the P series. Oh, this is geometric series. No, this is not geometric series as well because you have minus one here. So it is not geometric series. Oh, this is telescopic series. It is not because you cannot 
telescopic means you can cancel out something that you split it into two terms and then you can cancel out. So this is not the telescopic series. So it is not a P series, it is not a geometric series, or it is not a telescopic series, so fail. So number three, I mean if you want to integrate, you can use the integral test. But of course any the integral test you have to integrate two to the k over e to the k minus one dk or something like that. We don't want to do that because uh looks like the function is not easy to integrate. And maybe the function is not decreasing, so we are not going to use the integral test. So actually the exam that you're going to see on Wednesday, it's going to cover up to the integral test. So only 1, 2, and 3. But I mean, for the midterm exam, you can go further to number 4. Can you use the ratio test or root test? I mean, I am I'm pretty sure that I don't want to use the root test because... You have minus 1 here. If you take everything to the 1 over k, it will not help anything because you have minus 1 over there. And also the ratio test, maybe, ratio test, maybe, or, or number 5, you also have the comparison test and limit comparison test. That's that is all the two you have here. So you can try using ratio test if you want to, but the limit gonna go to one. So I'm gonna try to use the ratio, te ratio test here and show you it will not work. So if you do the ratio test, it's gonna be limit uh, two to the k plus one over e to the k plus one minus one and it's going to be e to the k over 2 to the k here. So minus 1. Oops, sorry. Wrong one. So e to the k minus 1 over 2 to the k here. So if you use a ratio test, this one you're trying to use a divergent test. This one you're trying to use a ratio test. When you use a ratio test here, so you can, you can see that the one that I group up that is circle here and here. So they're going to group together. And let's see. 2 to the k plus 1 and 2 to the k cancel out. So you're going to get 2. Right? Because 2 to the k cancel out. And then e to the k minus 1 over e to the k plus 1 minus 1. How can you compute the limit here? It is actually the hard one because when you're trying to plug in infinity over there, so e to, in, e to the infinity is actually infinity, right? So it's actually infinity over infinity. And if you're trying to use a L'Hopital rule, to fix e to the in e to fix uh, infinity over infinity, it will not disappear because you can see that e to the k if you differentiate, you're gonna get e to the k e to the k, so it will stay forever. And e to the k plus one, the same thing. They're gonna you gonna you're gonna make your term bigger because you have e times e to the k, and then e to the k are gonna stay forever as well. So no cancellation here. So that mean. It, you, you think already that, oh, ratio test look like it's going to be the hard one because you have to compute the limit here and it will not go pretty well with the uh, form of the question. So finally, you probably give up on the ratio test. Let's try to do something about the comparison test and limit comparison test. How do you compare it to, to the k over e to the k minus 1? So I'm just give up on this one, give up on this one. So what about comparison test? Can you do e to the k bigger than e to the k minus 1? This is always, right? And then you can do 1 over e to the k minus 1 less than 1 over e to the k. Oops. Am I right? No. One second. I'm going to just do the... Because both of them are 
pretty good. I mean, if you if k bigger than let's say two, for example, actually one is okay. But I'm gonna start from two, and then now both of them are positive if it is bigger than two, and then you do the cross cross thing. So it's gonna have one over e to the k minus one bigger than one over e to the k. Just do the cross multiply or something like that, and then you multiply two to the k. This one, 2 to the k over e to the k minus 1. This is the one that we want to test. But actually, it will not give you a good inequality because it's greater than 2 to the k over e to the k here. You know that this one, summation of 2 to the k over e to the k, k start from 2 to infinity, for example. This is actually convergent by the geometric series. This is the geometric series uh, where the ratio r is equal to 2 over e, right? So 2 over e is less than 1. So actually this one is convergent. But when you have something convergent here, and you have something bigger than the thing that convergent, you make no conclusion. So the comparison seems to be very hard to use because uh, you need something that is a perfect match. But this one, it is not because uh, you can make a conclusion that the term inside is convergent, but the term out, the term that is bigger than it could be convergent or divergent, you do not know yet. Uh, maybe the limit comparison test? A subscript k equal to 2 to the k over e to the k minus 1. Uh, if you want to do the limit comparison test, you can pick the bk to be something that when you want to compute limit of a subscript k over b subscript k, you get something that is bigger than zero. So let's try. Okay. Uh, if you want the, the, the limit to be easy to compute, uh, how about you pick e to the k over 2 to the k so it means you can pick like b k to be 2 to the k over e to the k is that okay and then now you oh it's gonna and then now you ha have limit k go to infinity so 2 to the k are gonna cancel out and then now you come back to e to the k over to e to the k minus 1 so same thing with the ratio test right looks like that it's gonna have the same pattern with the ratio test the thing that is better is like you have e to the k here looks easier to compute because you have e to the k but there are the ratio test you have e to the k plus 1 over there so let's try to do the limit comparison test more. So if you compute this one, you still feel like, okay, it, it, this is infinity over infinity. Yes, but we're going to choose, let's say we're going to use the L'Hopital rule. So you're going to have e to the k over e to the k. But this is a good cancellation because once you do it, but the k here in the, the k here is not k and k plus one. This is just the same k. So when you do the L'Hopital rule, so you're going to get e to the k over e to the k, and it's actually 1. 1 for limit comparison test is a good one, because you have 1, and then it's bigger than 0. So you can make a conclusion that summation of a subscript k and summation of b subscript k goes in the same way. Right, so you know that because this is a limit comparison test, but you know that BK that you pick here, this is actually the geometric series. Right, uh, with the R equal to 2 over E, less than 1. So it means actually this is convergent series. Which means you can conclude immediately that 
uh, summary so you can make a conclusion that the thing that you want to test summation 2 to decay over e to decay minus 1 this is actually convergent by the limit comparison test because you compute you pick the bk smartly so you, you pick it to be 2 to decay over e to decay and then when you compute limit a k over b k you get something bigger than zero so it is actually convergent uh, it will not work for the ratio test because you can see that if you use it for the ratio test even you get the limit equal to one for the ratio test one is not a good number because you're gonna get no conclusion for the ratio test so this is the one that is the answer um, hold on correct one okay you can say that you can see that when you compute the series here um or you you when you do the checking the convergence of the series it could be super tedious that you have to go to one of them uh, this is why i told you that the series is hard because you have so many tests and it's gonna be your choice that you can use whatever you want so sometimes people go to something that uh, it is not a good way to do it. Sometimes people go to integral tests, go to something that is much harder than it should be. All right, let's do the last one, part D. K square over 3 to the K plus 1 less to the K. K start from 1 to infinity. So this one, what do you want to use if you see this one? So when you see something power to the k, what would you use? Anyone have the idea? What do you want to use? Something raised to the k. You can try to follow the guidelines so the divergent test. The divergent test is mean you have to compute limit k square over three to the k square plus one to the k here. And then you compute it, and then you hope that it is not equal to zero. But if you want to compute this limit, mm, you have something to decay, so it just block you to compute it easily, right? It's just like, mm, and it feel like that it's gonna go to zero as well because inside inside the parentheses it go to one third, and the outside go to infinity, so it should go to at the end it should go to one third to the infinity, which should be zero anyway. So divergent test seems to be no conclusion for this one. And of course, geometric series, no. Telescopic series, no. Uh, P series, no. Integral test, uh, no. So maybe we're gonna use ratio test or root test. The root test seem to be pretty good for this one because the root test say that if you start from a subscript K, Maybe you're gonna do raise to the one over k and then you take limit and you hope for something less than one so it is convergent. If you get something bigger than one, it is divergent. If it is equal to one, no conclusion. Let's do the root test then. So we're gonna do limit a subscript k to the one over k here, which is the limit of you start from k square over 3 k square plus 1 to the k and then you power everything by 1 over k right because inside the bracket that is your ak and then you raise to the 1 over k one more time because this is the root test and bam k and 1 over k are gonna cancel out beautiful so you have k square over 3 k square plus 1 this is actually one third and that's less than one so the series convergent by the root test good
and then done. You don't have to use something else. Once you figure out it is uh, convergent, it's convergent. That's it. Okay, I'll let you jot down in a minute. Anyone else room having fun learning series? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, when I like was in the first year, so same thing, I hate the series one. I feel like, why do we learn this thing? This is so tedious. But you know, like this is this is probably the most the most chapter that is uh lean to be s super mathematics. It's like you cannot see the application easily with the series because it's just like look like it is like a for the math person. Okay, so let's go back to the guideline here. Oh. So once you once you walk through all examples, now you can see the guideline easier. So I'm gonna go back to the guideline. So you done with this one? So I'm gonna go back to the guideline here. Again, one more time, limit a k is not equal to zero. You make the conclusion that the series is divergent. You also have this, this, and this geometric series sum uh, a r to the k. r less than one convergent, r bigger than one divergent. p series is just p bigger than one convergent, p less than or equal to one divergent. Telescopic series, uh, you compute SN. You compute SN. And then you take the limit of SN. And see if it is convergent or divergent. If it is equal to L, convergent. If it is equal to plus infinity or minus infinity, divergent. That is the telescopic series. The integral test, what will you do? One more time uh, before the exam on Wednesday. So the integral test. You're gonna need to define fx to be similar to your an, right? And then you make sure that the fx is continuous, positive, and decreasing. And then after that, you integrate one, uh, one to the infinity fx dx. And then you can see that this is going to be the one that convergent or divergent if it is equal to some number l convergent if it is plus or minus divergent like this is the, to make the conclusion about the uh, integral test so the ratio test and root test ratio test and root test so the ratio test and root test make the same conclusion so something less than one Convergent, something bigger than one, divergent, something equal to one, no conclusion. This is the ratio test and root test. Okay. Uh, for the ratio test, you're gonna look at the a k subscript a subscript k plus one over a k, and then you take the limit. This is for the ratio test. For the root test, you're gonna look at limit. A subscript k to the one over k. All right, and the last one is the limit comparison test and comparison test. Comparison on the limit comparison test. So for the limit comparison test, it's gonna be limit a k over b k. You hope for something that is equal to L, bigger than zero. If you have some number that is bigger than zero, then summation of A, K, and B, K gonna have the same conclusion. Uh, for the comparison test, you need to find something to compare and then make a conclusion. So this is actually the, e, the big guideline for checking the series. Okay. Uh, 
we are not going to start the section 8.6 today because I know that the exam is coming up and then you feel like a little bit nervous about that. Uh, so we're going to start talking about the, uh, the format of the exam on Wednesday and also we're going to walk you through some questions on the homework if you have questions. Uh, let me see. Uh, we, we're going to start section 8.6 after the exam. Let's see. So. Okay, one second. Go back to this one. Okay, looks like we have a a full class. Okay, good. All right, let's talk about what you expect to see on Wednesday here. So 60 point. Uh, 60.8 questions. Uh, once you get up, the point that you get, we're going to divide it by 4. And that's going to be 15% 50, of your grade. I think about 60 point, I cannot remember, but I think about 35 point. It's going to be serious. About 35 points gonna be checking the series, checking the convergent, divergent of the series. And about 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6, about 18 to 20 points, 18 I think, yeah, about. It's gonna be um, Checking the convergent and divergent, but it's going to be for sequence. Uh, sequence means section 8.2. Uh, series is going to be section 8.3 and 8.4. And improper integral, it's one question, seven point about you know, improper integral. But you know, you need improper integral for integral test as well. So basically, in proper integral, there's going to be one question separately. And when you use the integral test, you also need to use the improper integral as well. Is that right? About 60 points. This is approximately. But there are going to be eight questions. There are going to be some questions that tell you directly that use telescopic. Some questions going to tell you that, hey, use telescopic. That means you have to use telescopic. Some question going to say use geometric. So you have to use geometric. Some question going to say use the integral test. You have to use the integral test. So basically the exam going to be okay because I, t I told you immediately that use this one, use this one. Except the last question that going to be use the method by your choice. <laughs> use the method by your choice. This is going to be, this is question 8, it's going to be by your side, which is 16 point. They're going to be, <laughs> which is going to be like 4 sub question on the last one. So the last one is for the challenge one, but you know, <laughs> yes, you have to pick the question, you have to pick it by yourself. But this should be a question 7, question 6, question 5 or something, you know, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you can do it. I'm pretty sure you can do it. It's like similar to homework, mostly similar to homework. Not, not, not that hard. Uh, let, let's do a quick review here. For the improper integral, so... Is there any question from the homework that you cannot do it for the improper integral? <laughs> okay, so I think Chana Chan always asked me question 15, right? For the improper integral. Let's do question 15 together. So let's do the homework improper integral for one question. 7.8. 15. This is your homework. Uh, Chana Chan, what is the question again? 1 over x log p x. This one? 
e to the square to infinity. So this one, if you see this type of question, it of course this is an improper integral, right? Because you have the top part to be infinity. Oh, key greater than one. Okay. So of course p equal to infinity. This is going uh, x equal to infinity. This is the one that make it to be improper integral. Remember, you have two types of improper integral. So the type one, it means you have the plus or minus infinity at the boundary. Type two, it's gonna be you have something that is undefined. So this is the two type of improper <laughs> integral. Of course. When you do this one, you have to pick your substitution. But first of all, we're going to do the integrate first. X log x dx. So let's try to integrate this one first. And then it's going to be d log x over 1 over x here, right? Because you can pick u to be log x always. Oh, I have p as well. Right? So I have p. So I, I am going to use my use substitution so i'm gonna pick u to be log x and once i get one over x here it's gonna be cancel out so you only have one to the integrate like log x to the minus p d log x and when you integrate it it's gonna be log x uh to the negative p plus one right because you plus one over negative p plus 1. This is actually the hard part because you have to do u substitution and integrate. Uh, the p here is just the constant, so you don't have to care it a lot. This is just a constant. And then once you get that one, now it you go back to the improper integral. So it's going to be limit t go to infinity, integrate e square to the t, to up to t. 1 over x log to the p x dx. And then now it's going to be limit t go to infinity. Uh, you plug in the function, so it's going to be log. So I can plug in t first. So it's going to be log t minus p plus 1 over minus p plus 1. And then I plug in e square. e square uh, minus p plus 1 over minus p plus 1. Anyone can follow up to this part? Okay. So now it's time to compute the limit. This is actually the constant, right? But what is this one? So when t go to infinity, this thing gonna go to infinity, right? Because log t gonna go to infinity as well. But this is actually minus p plus one. What is minus p plus one here? P bigger than one. Let's say let's say that p equal to ten, for example, minus ten plus one. This is minus nine. So it's going to go back to the bottom, right? This mean this term going to go to zero. Agree with me? This going to go to zero because actually it is one over log t to the log minus p plus one times minus p plus one. It's actually one over infinity. It's, it go to zero. So it's go to zero here. And this term is just a constant, which now you have to find it because it's going to be your limit. But it's actually a constant. If you want to find it, you can cancel log and e. So it's going to be 2 to the minus p plus 1 over p plus 1. It's just constant. Anyway, you can say this is going to go to constant. Because it's 0 minus constant. So it's actually convergent. Because this is the convergence uh, thing. So, oh, but you need to find where you do you. No, 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 no. Let's find where you, you can find it. <laughs> so, see. Well, I will subtract your part if you just say constant. 2 to the minus p plus 1 over minus p plus 1. So, this is the answer, right? Yeah. So, it's going to be uh, minus 1 over 1 minus p and then 2 to the 1 minus p. Uh, a little bit ugly, but that is how it works so this is e square to the infinity 1 over x log to the px dx this is actually convergent
and its limit is boop 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 yeah well the thing that you're gonna see on wednesday is easier than this one but you the same concept but it's actually easier than this one so in the homework question 15 that i asked you to do it Any more question on improper integral? So you expect to see one question on, on the exam, but you know there's gonna be another improper integral inside the integral test. So when you do the integral test, you have to integrate one more time with the improper integral. So basically two questions, because one question separately, one question inside the integral test. Make sense? All right. Uh, Now let's talk about sequence and series. Go back to this one. Okay. It just this is your homework, right? Okay. Good. All right. So about the sequence and series, keep in mind that the notation are not the same. So sequence, you're going to use a bracket. Series, you're going to use a summation. Yeah, easier than this one, the improper integral. The hard one is... That's no hard question. This is sequence. This is series. So if I ask you what is 1 over n here, convergent or divergent? The red one, 1 over n, convergent or divergent? This is actually the sequence, so it's go to 0. So this is convergent. Right, because when you take limit and it's equal to number, so it's convergent. But if you see this notation, sum 1 over n, n from 1 to infinity, convergent or divergent? This is divergent by the p-series, or you can say the harmonic series, the same thing. So notation are not the same. You take a look, the left-hand side sequence, the right-hand side series. If I say this is, say, n over n squared plus 4, for example, this is convergent as long as you can compute the limit here. The limit here is zero. The limit here is zero. As long as you can compute the limit, it's convergent. Let's say I have negative one to the n over n. So it's also convergent because you can compute the limit of the sequence by using the squeezing theorem. So all you need to memorize about the sequence is one, you see the notation bracket and it is a sequence. You need to compute limit a n. That's all you need. And if the limit a n equal to L, that means the series or uh, the sequence or the sequence is convergent. If it is plus or minus infinity, divergent. The technique that you're gonna see for sure is the L'Hopital rule. So practice on the L'Hopital rule because so the L'Hopital rule is a technique that helps on computing limit. Of course, the one that you have to practice is the one with that you have the form 1 to the infinity, 0 to the 0, and infinity to the 0. This is the form that you have to practice because for sure you're going to see something similar on the exam because this is the one that you have to take log. For example, the one that I asked you to do it on the homework right that i have n o n plus five for example to the n that is the one the one that okay i'm gonna just delete series first we're gonna talk about the series later but something you see here like in the homework 
this is actually the form that you have to, to use the L'Hopital rule, right? Everyone remember, you have to extend the domain before you're using your L'Hopital rule. Otherwise, uh, we do not know that you have the domain to be the real number. So we're going to define fx to be x over x plus 5 to the x. And then you take log. So it's going to be x log x plus over x plus 5 here. You take log first. So you take log because you want x to be, you know, the same level with the x over x plus 5. And then now you take limit on the left hand side. On the right hand side. Right, and then now you can keep going compute the right hand side. Once you get the limit, well, it's going to be limit. Uh, you can keep going, you can do um, the L'Hopital rule, whatever you want. Once you get number L, remember that on the left hand side, you're going to have log of limit fx because you can uh, swap the position between log and limit, right? And then that means your conclusion is going to be limit fx is equal to e to the L. It, not, it is not just L, it's going to be E to the L because when you get that L, so you have to uh, go back to E to the L because you have logarithm here. So this type of question should be for sure that you're going to see that you have to take log and then you compute the limit. I think this is similar to your homework, right? To one question. So take a look at this type of question. They're going to be for sure on the exam and also the easy one that you do the factoring that you just compare the highest degree on the top and the bottom they're gonna be a question on that thing too you expect to see two questions on the sequence two questions for sequence okay so one question on improper integral one question on a uh, two question on sequence the rest is series. <laughs> series, they have you have so many tests, right? So you have more questions on series. All right, but the series is gonna up to the integral test, so you don't have to be worried now about the. You don't have to be worried now about the, uh, ratio test or root test or limit comparison or comparison test, but if you wanna use it, you can on the on the last question you can, but. Mostly, uh, the question that I put on the exam gonna can be can be done by using only the test that we learn in section eight point three and eight point four. The last question: Do so, we not need to study the things that we not cover? On mm -hmm, the test mm -hmm. one, right? So the last question that I say that use the method of your choice. Usually, it's gonna be easy if you use the technique that we learn in class for for section eight point three and four. No need to use the comparison test or limit comparison test. If you want to try, you can, but it's going to be harder if you use it. No, 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 no. But if you want to use it, feel like, if you feel like, oh, Ajahn, I cannot do this question by using the easy tool. I want to use the hard tool. You can, you can if you want to, but uh, not necessary. By the way, that we don't have the session until 8.3 midterm exam start from 8.5 so it start from root test and ratio test so but you can use the test before that you want that you already learned as well but you know for the midterm exam the question that I pick it is easy if you use the ratio test root test limit comparison and and comparison test. If you pick something that you already learned, something like integral test, it will be harder. So anyway, the, the knowledge is, is still just true. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's review eight questions that you're going to see Wednesday. Question two, improper integral. Three and four, sequence. Question one is multiple choice. It's going to be the quick check 
for the, for you that you understand the theory or not. The quick check something like one over n. This one over n. This is convergent or divergent. This is convergent, right? If I say sum one over n, convergent. One over n square, convergent, divergent. Convergent, nah. This is right. Sum one what, over n square. Oh, sorry. This one divergent. This one divergent. This is convergent, right? This is P series. P equal to 2. So question 1 is like multiple choice. If you don't know the answer, you just choose one. And then this is also all the series tests. Series can be question 5, 6, 7, 8. They are all series. I think it's just way too easy, so I need to make more questions. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have about 30 minutes left for today. Any question from the homework that you want to see the answer? Or any question that you want me to go over? We still have time. So we're gonna start 10.30 sharp on Wednesday in afternoon. That room, 205, the room next to that one. Next to this room. All right, so I will stay for questions, but if you don't have questions, you can go. But if you have questions about the homework or anything, let me know so we can uh, have a chat. We have 20 more minutes for, do, for you to, have, to ask questions. But if you feel like you, you are ready already, so good. Um, I will see you on Wednesday for the test. 10.30, okay, everyone. And I'm gonna stop recording now, but uh, let me know if you have questions. So I'll stay 20 more minutes for questions.